Grandma says it's time to throw the green flag on another edition of this show. And we have got a first for the Derek Pernasiglio show, our first female driver. Amber Balkin joins us in the studio. Amber, thank you for uh, coming here and joining us on the second floor. Thanks for having me. This is a, a first, too. We have one of our lady drivers in, but uh, you have been a journey woman, I guess you could say, so far in this uh, racing thing between sprint cars and stock cars, dirt, pavement. First, let's go right from the beginning. How did it all start? So I'm a third generation race car driver. So my mom's father raced and my parents met at the racetrack. So I've been at the racetrack since I've literally been in my mother's belly and um, grew up racing, just watching my dad race, right? So I, for me, it was, it was something I always knew I wanted to do. I had my parents take me out of school every Friday and we would head down to the States and, and go racing. That was just my life to spend weekends in a motorhome watching my dad go around in circles. So um, it was, I definitely knew that I wanted to do it as well. So third generation racer, did you ever get to see your grandfather race? No, I didn't. He was well retired by the time I was born, but um, I did get to watch my uncle race, which was my mom's brother and my dad, all my cousins race. And so everyone raced, but I was the only girl in the family. So I was uh, the first, I guess, female to, to race in my family. So it was dirt right from the beginning. Yes. Right. So what were yeah. those early years like uh, uh, for you? Uh, was it a lot being with dad in the shop or were you going more to the racetrack or was it both? Yeah, it was honestly a little bit of both. Um, when I was younger, I had begged and begged my dad to let me race. And then finally at 10 years old, he said, all right, you can race, but you have to work on the car and raise your own sponsorship to race as well. So at 10 years old, I was, you know, learning how to clean bearings and, and clean the chain and all that kind of fun stuff. And uh, I, I'm really thankful that I got to spend that time with him and even when I raced 410 sprint cars my grandpa actually was the crew chief of my car for a bit so definitely got to spend good quality time with my family a lot and um, it's majority because of racing so as a little girl cleaning bearings and getting dirty and greasy is a huge contrast from say younger girls who are at 10 playing with barbies or into you know other types of things mm -hmm. you know going to pageants or whatever were you looked at by your other other females as like weird or you didn't like do like the girly things see i have always been a girly girl though like I, half of me is a tomboy and half of me is a girly girl because i i one day i would play with barbies and the next day i'd be you know making tracks out of uh out of the carpet with my little die cast cars and <laughs> uh, making the pit crew out of lego so honestly i've always been a mix and my dad's always joked that you know i got the best of both worlds i got a son and a daughter in one because I, i'm an only child so um that yeah i've always really been there's two sides of me there's the tomboy side and then there's the girly side and uh just depends where we're at which which side you see <laughs> how did it all start did you say i want to race or did your dad say hey do you want to give this a shot or how did it eventually lead to you getting behind the wheel yeah so my parent or my dad actually didn't want me to race you know he's like this is a huge time commitment it costs a lot of money like this racing is no joke you got to be all in right and that's why he said you know if you do want to race amber you have to go and raise the sponsorship dollars you have to buy the go-kart you have to work on the go-kart i need to see your commitment here if you want to do this so at 10 years old i was knocking on doors going to trade shows selling stickers raising all the money i could to buy a go-kart and that was 18 years ago so for the last 18 years Years, I've been raising my own sponsorship dollars, putting the deals together, um, putting sponsorship proposals, marketing decks, reaching out to people. That's I'm like to think of myself more as a businesswoman than I am a race car driver almost because in order to get on the track, um, there's a lot of back end work that needs to happen. How would you say it's just as much as working on the car and preparing it? I mean, now in the NASCAR side of things, drivers basically just show up with their safety equipment that we don't do a ton of work on the cars when i raced dirt it was different i was in the shop every week week with my dad working on the cars but now i spend 99 percent of my time finding sponsors and putting those relationships together and working out deals so that i can be in the car um you know i'll, I'll still go to the shop of course but 
you know, we have cr- these huge crews of guys who have specific roles on every part of the car, whether it be suspension or um, decaling or that, that you know, everyone kind of has their role. So um, thankfully, I got a sponsor, full time sponsor for this year so I can focus on driving a little bit more. And talking about that racing that you're going to do this year, we chatted. 40 races yeah and it's huge i mean that's most of the year this year so yeah. how exciting is that for you i am so excited you know the last um actually the majority of my career i have really lacked the financial backing like i said before you know my parents said if you want to race you have to do this on your own we're not helping you at all so i've always had to raise the funds and the funds haven't always been there i haven't been successful uh, at receiving full-time sponsorships every single year so to have that full-time sponsorship this year and race 40 races I'm thrilled because now I get to see what I can do behind the wheel with those 40 races and develop my skills, learn, you know, build on that momentum and try to win as many races as I can and hopefully the championship as well. So uh, here's the next question. Now that most of your day was consists of looking for sponsors, making proposals, that kind of stuff, talking with people, I'm assuming you're on the phone quite often. Okay. Now that you've got the sponsorship, uh, what are you going to do with the free time <laughs> that you usually be doing behind the computer or calling people? So I'm still going to use that time to do that because there's always next year, right? Like I'm already focusing and putting to deal- deals together for next year. You know, I-, I found that once you get to where you want to go, you can't just settle. You can't be complacent. You have to keep working and, and use this positive um, momentum in your favor. So I'm already working four deals for 2022 as we speak. And um, of course, I'm going to focus on driving. I'm going to be on my iRacing a lot more now that I have like a little extra free time. Um, but just watching video, doing everything I can to make sure that I make the most of this opportunity. I make the most of these 40 races. You know, being with Bill McAnally is a great team. Everyone knows of him on the West Coast. So I really need to show up every day, every time I'm in that car and prove that I deserve to be there and not only be there, but move up the ranks of NASCAR and and have a place in the sport at the top level. How did you get hooked up with Samantha Bush and then end up on the Racing Wives show? Because you're engaged, but you're not married yet. So how did that all come about? And I'm not married to a race car driver either. So I'm right. technically not a racing wife. Yeah. So you're, he'll be a racing husband. He'll be a racing husband. Yes. <laughs> uh, so Samantha and I met quite a few years ago, actually. We filmed a pilot for another TV show called Racer Girls. Never went to air, but Sam was actually our mentor in the show. So um, this was before I moved to North Carolina. And I used that opportunity to introduce myself to Sam and say, hey, Sam, my name's Amber Balkin. I'm from Winnipeg. I'm Canadian, trying to make it in the States. I want to race NASCAR, I race sprint cars right now. And so I really kind of used that time to tell her my story. And she was really receptive to it. And she's like, oh, I think this is awesome. And she gave me a follow on social media. L- ended up leading to doing some modeling for her Shop Murph Boutique. And that leaded leaded to her saying, hey, we have this new show we're doing. It's on CMT. It's called Racing Wives. One of the wives had to drop out. They're looking for a replacement. Are you interested in doing something like this? And I, my first thought was, yeah, sponsor exposure, right? Like if, if I can get on TV, maybe I'll attract new sponsors. This would be a great opportunity. So I met with CMT. They ended up liking me. And that's how I ended up on the show. Exposure so, is exposure, right? Yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. So uh, have has that helped you with finding any kind of sponsors or anything uh, along the way? Yeah. Um, I honestly thought it would help a lot more than it did. I, I didn't receive any sponsorship afterwards, but I mean, I did get to race for Kyle. Um, the, we had mechanical issues in the races. They didn't go as well as we had hoped, but working with his team, the, his team there is fantastic. And even working with Kyle himself was something that I wouldn't have been able to do if it wasn't for that show. And Kyle is such he's so talented he he works so hard and um, there's so much that I admire about him and so for him just to take the time and go to a practice day with me and coach me that that meant a lot to me so Cup even champion. though yeah, exactly I, huge. exactly so even though you know the show didn't go necessarily maybe the way I wanted it to there was still a lot of great takeaways from it you know I, I always thought that you deserved another shot in one of Kyle Bush's late models because the first one you got caught up in somebody else's rack and mm-hmm. the other time I think you had some mechanical trouble so mm-hmm. like you had situations that were beyond your control yeah. so I really think that you definitely not I, I can't say got a, you should have you sh- 
um, you, I'm not going to say you didn't get a fair shake. Of course, you got the ride, but uh, it would be cool to see you get another opportunity to really show what you could do. Yeah, and the thing is, I know Kyle pushed for that, but at the end of the day, everything comes down to money, and I just didn't have the sponsorship to do any more races with them. But again, I, I'm thankful that they gave me the opportunity and I got to work with them. And um, who knows, maybe something in the future. But right now, I'm just focused on these next 40 races coming up, racing with Bill McNally on the West Coast, and. And obviously, I'm really, really excited about it. <laughs> so what has been the, the wildest or the weirdest thing that has happened to you so far in this short track racing career? <sighs> <laughs> I mean, you had a bad wreck last year. I remember that. Yeah. Um, nothing too crazy in in the pavement world. Um, all my like crazy or weird stories end up coming from way back when in, in dirt, well, Let's hear I think. one. That's what we're here. We're here to hear stories. <laughs> oh, man. There's a few. I'll, uh, there's two that come to mind. I'll, I'll try to make them a little more concise. But... One of them was when I was racing mini sprints. And this is when my dad and I worked in the shop together. He worked on his dirt late model. I'd work on my mini sprint. And I had to put a new wing together. So he gave me the rivets and the rivet gun and I'm putting it together. And he's like, oh, good job, Amber, you put it together. And I go to race and we're in the feature and I'm leading the race and my wing collapses. And I'm like, I, I didn't know, I could feel that the car was handling different and it wasn't handling right, but I wasn't sure what was happening. If I maybe had a flat tire, I, I didn't know what was happening, but right. I was like, I, I'm gonna, there's only a few laps, I'm gonna see through and just keep racing. So I ended up winning the race. And when I got out of the car, the announcer was like, oh, your wing, what do you think? And I was like, oh, is that what happened? Like, I, I could tell my <laughs> car wasn't handling well, but I didn't know what happened. So I look up and my wing clapped and my dad goes, you use the wrong size of rivets. Like, that's the last time you rivet your own wing to together and I was like oh I'm sorry but um that that was kind of funny and then another thing came from the lightning and you sprint. know you got no one else to blame it on but yourself because no, you did it 100% it was my <laughs> fault and and the thing is too when I put it together my dad's like let me put it together oh, I'm gonna do it and I was like no I, I can do this I can do this on my own and you know trying to prove that I'm tough and I got this and He's like, all right, fine, you do it. And then, yeah, I use the wrong rivets. But I'm pretty sure he handed those rivets to me, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't, can't really call yeah, them Yeah, no, but I, I definitely put it together, so I think it's my fault. So but <laughs> with all the business end of it that you're doing with the proposals, the phone calls, the, the, the chatting with, I'm assuming you're chatting with CEOs and, and stuff, Technically, this is great training ground for eventually becoming a team owner, but have you ever thought about taking some of these skills and, like, selling yourself to people that you can you can show them how to do this here i can show you how to call cold call someone or set it up like that or make some money that way yeah it's something i've definitely thought about right now my main focus is trying to get as far as i can in nascar and and be the best driver i can be and and see you know how much potential i can truly live out um for me, a big part of wanting to be successful in this sport is to give back. And for me, that looks like ma making my own sponsorship fund for dirt drivers and being able to give back financially in, in terms of sponsorship. Another big thing that I'm doing, I'm working with a group called Shift Up Now, Pippa Mann, who is an IndyCar driver. She's uh, one of the leading ladies of that as well. And what we do is help other people either get into the sport, help find sponsors, basically all the... Uh, everything that we've learned through our experiences in the sport, we want to help others. Because if you want to get into racing, but don't know how, it's it, it can be a hard industry to navigate in. You know, even when I first moved down here, I was a dirt girl. I didn't know much about NASCAR. I had to learn the teams and, and the different series and the different cars and what paths to take. And, you know, I made mistakes and I learned things, but I made good decisions too. So kind of taking everything I learned and giving it back to those, um, not only females, but males too, who are interested in racing racing being a team owner is something I honestly haven't really thought about but I it did cross my mind lately um, but again I think right now I just want to focus on racing um, I would like to do speaking engagements in the future for sure just because of my journey has been a pretty unique one you know I've had to overcome a lot of adversity to get where I am and I'm going to continue to have to overcome quite a lot of obstacles but um, I just want to show people that no matter where you come from no matter who you are you don't always need to have all the tools in the toolbox to to be a champion or, or to get where you want to go in life you just got to learn how to be resourceful and be willing, willing to work hard so um, that's I really want to kind of take all of that that's what I feel like my purpose is, is to, you know, show other people to, to go after your dreams and live out your potential and whatever, wh however that translate, whether it's through more speaking engagements or being a team owner or um, just 
you know, continuing to be a race car driver. However, I can accomplish that. I'll I'll be happy. You know, it's it's one of those things where you could do workshops. It really, I mean, you could show these people how to do it or be an instructor. To right, and them. and that's what I've been doing with Shipped Up now. But I just I don't charge yet because I, I again I just I really like to help people and and use my experiences um, to help them because I wouldn't be where I am if people didn't help me get here. So I think it's important to help others as well. The preparation that you've been telling me too is just incredible. From the paperwork to calling people to actually sitting down and meeting with these people to even just your physical fitness and everything being behind the wheel of the car like that that's another thing that you're huge into you're you told me you work out twice a day every day yes <laughs> now what does a, di- a day of like a fitness regimen consist of because your fiance is a football player so obviously he's got to stay in shape mm-hmm. or, so do you guys work out together or what's what's the fitness regimen here yeah so he works out like three to four hours a day he is more intense than I am um, I do usually my first workout is cardio my second workout is weights or some type of weight training um, for me, I just want to be the absolute best driver I can be going into this year. I wanted that confidence. I wanted that mental toughness. I just, I wanted to to feel unstoppable going into this race season. And so I've been super disciplined with my training, with my nutrition, um, my mindset. I've been working a lot on kind of the mental aspect of it because athletes, yes, we we need to be physically fit, but a big part of being an athlete is, is being right up in your mind too. So I've just been preparing as much as I can for for this season yeah exercise is huge diet also goes along with that too so like what do you guys do as far as like the the diet regimen for your workouts uh you said one you said to me earlier you said you have a no cheat meal thing that you're doing too so what what do you guys cook what do you make yeah so um we don't drink any alcohol or not for the next I'm 75 days. <laughs> um, don't get me wrong, I enjoy a glass of wine for <laughs> sure. And I'll, de- I'll definitely get back to drinking wine eventually, but uh, I just wanted to be really strict going into the season. But um, I mean, oh, we have a lot of oats, protein oats in the mornings. Um, lunch will be, I mean, I-, I love to cook. I love cooking and I cook. Jordan what is do you guys my cook? fiance, he is pretty spoiled. He gets breakfast, lunch and dinner made for him. Really? Yeah, yes. <laughs> okay. But he does nice. the laundry, so that's right. that's where. Who does the dishes? I do. Ah, he does. Okay. So you got to cook and do he dishes. Does, I know. That's we yeah. have this fight at home because I'm like, if I cook, you should do the dishes, that's a and bad he's deal. like, but I do the laundry. So, but um, yeah. I I mean, we just we honestly eat well balanced meals. Like we eat spaghetti. We eat a lot. Of, we eat a lot of chicken, a lot of sweet potatoes, a lot of broccoli. That's like our main thing. Okay. Um, but just like well balanced, nutritious meals, lots of protein, lots of veggies and, and good carbs like rice or potatoes or sweet potatoes and cool. yeah, just good food. <laughs> well, this, this brings us to our next piece. And that is going to be five questions that we're going to ask you. Okay. Kay. So, uh, answer as honestly as you can. Okay. Ready? Yes. Talladega nights or days of thunder. Talladega Nights. Uh, really? <laughs> is, that a, is that too millennial of an answer for you? <laughs> it, it might be. It's, yeah. it's okay, though, because, you know, some people like Days of Thunder. I, for their own I honestly think Will Ferrell's hilarious. Like, I, I just think he's really funny. And, um, yeah, it's just that movie always makes me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Next one is, at home, who has command of the remote control, you or your fiancé? Uh, honestly, we have pretty good shit. We share. Like, we're, we're pretty good with that. Mm-hmm. We we might fight about the whole cleaning situation, but we're always on the same page when it comes to the remote control. What do you guys watch? Um, we watch a lot of like cooking shows. <laughs> okay. We watch oh, really, yeah, okay. uh, a lot of Family Guy. Just okay. to, um, right now we're watching Criminal Minds, which is kind of an older show, but we've been throwing it on. Um, it it changes, I guess. Oh, and game shows. We love game shows like Family Feud and The Chase. My girlfriend and I watch Ninety Day Fiance. That is we our watch guilty- that too. Okay, that's yes. our guilty pleasure. Yep. No, we were on that too. Uh, I was married to an immigrant, so I kind of that's I, so. Funny. Oh, I was one of those episodes. I, yeah. I, okay. All right. Next question. The, okay. Before the ninety days, that's that's when we like. Yes, 90 that's day the other one too. The ninety days, and then yeah. the other way. Watch the other way. I haven't. Se- we haven't seen that. <laughs> I, I, it's, it, I'm so ashamed of myself for liking. <laughs> <laughs> show, but it's something that we watch together. Okay, so you already established you could cook. Okay, now for you, gym or CrossFit? Gym. Yeah, I'm not a not a CrossFit person. No, why is that? I don't know. I just I like to go in the gym, throw my headphones on, blast music, and just kind of go with the flow of what I feel like training that day. Your fiance strikes me as a CrossFitter. 
No, no? not at all. Really? No, he's Being a f- football player having to be physical and move. Yeah, all that? no, he's a hundred percent like strength training, and then he'll do like his mobility work and and speed training and stuff like that for the specific skill sets he needs. But no, he, he's not a CrossFitter either. Really? Okay, yeah. that's surprising. Okay, last question: Lady Gaga or Madonna? Um. Lady Gaga, only because I'm more familiar with her. Another millennial answer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, cool. Well, we're about to wrap it up. But listen, good luck this year. You've got 40 races this year for your new sponsor. They've got to be excited about that, right? They're so excited. And the coolest part about my new sponsor is they're from my home province of Manitoba. So I actually have um, two Manitoba companies sponsoring me, Manitoba Girl Racing in California. So it's a pretty ironic um, duo, but we're all super excited and they want to see me in Victor lane a lot i plan to be in victory lane a lot so we're, we're excited okay well listen good luck this year you've got 40 races this year and you have to make us a promise okay you win a race this year you have to thank this show in victory lane okay okay i'll try to remember okay, you gotta say <laughs> like, i want to thank bill mcanally you yeah. know and, and, icon direct yeah, icon direct oh yeah. yeah and the Derek pernisiglio show you know okay. for having me on yeah you got to do that okay Kit, that, that's how okay. do you say your life i've been trying to say it per <laughs> like, Try I just been saying Derek P the whole time. Pernasiglio. Pernasiglio. That's okay. That's We're a really ha- cool last name. It, it has its moments. <laughs> it's cool. I like it. <laughs> Amber Balkan joins us in the studio. It was great to have her on. And like always, we'll see you the next time. Bye.